Hallelujah. Father God, thank you for preaching privilege. Give me preaching power. Take my mind and think with it. Take my mouth and speak with it. I pray this in the precious, powerful, preeminent name of the Prince of Peace and the Redeemer of the Lord. Said, amen. amen. If you love the Lord, say amen again. Amen. Say amen one more time. I want you to uh, open your Bibles, look with me at Luke chapter 23, verse 46. <clears throat> and uh, when you're there, say amen. The Bible says, and when Jesus had cried with a loud voice, he said, Father, Father, into thy hands, into thy hands. I commend my spirit. And having said thus, he gave up the ghost. What, what we've heard today and what this word and all of these words remind us is that there are some lasting lessons from the Lord. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, the last seven sayings give us lessons from the Lord my brothers and sisters no one can be sure when you're going to die it's not very often that people get to know that their date of death is coming but we've come to discover that in those last moments of life many people become very filled with honesty for that reason, it's been long practice, very common to document the final words of our loved ones. The last and final words of a person not only reveal much about their mindset when facing death, they are very, very instructive. Many folk on the deathbed want to leave with their family and friends some words of wisdom. They want their posterity to be left with something more than just the material. Because money can only do so much for you. You're going to need to know some things that money can't buy. And, and gold can't secure. D.L. Moody, when he died on his deathbed, he turned to his sons, his three boys, and he said to them, If God is your partner, you can make big plans. Bob Marley, y'all know Bob Marley, Buffalo Soldiers, he said, he said, you need to understand that money can't buy you life. Y'all remember Paul? Paul said, I'm now ready to be offered and the time of my departure is at hand. But, but before he said that, he said, I charge you, Timothy, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and at his kingdom. Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine for the time will come. And I think it's came when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. I think when Jesus spoke these last seven sayings on the cross of Calvary, he was not focusing on his misery. He was still focusing on ministry. Jesus died like he lived. I feel like preaching. I just felt it. He died like he lived. He lived, according to Matthew chapter 9, verse 35, for three purposes, for teaching, for preaching, and for healing. He died teaching. I like teaching. Can I get a witness? Y'all not teach if you don't have a particular purpose, a goal, uh, an objective in mind. And in every one of these words, he died teaching. When, when he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. His objective was to teach them about the power of forgiveness. When he died saying, verily I say unto you today, you shall be with me in paradise. He died teaching them about the provision of faith. When he said, Mother Mary, behold your son, and John, behold your, your mother, he's, he died teaching us about providing for our families. When he said, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? He said that you, not, you have to understand and you've got to know, and I want to teach you how to pray when you feel forsaken. 
when he spoke two brief words he was a man of brevity sometime he said he said I thirst he he spoke to us and told us that every now and then you're going to have some pain in your flesh but then when he said it is finished he died teaching how uh, how, how how you have to persevere when we until you until you get to the point that you finish and I looked at this last word, I looked at this last word of the last word, this last sayings of the last sayings, this, his last word. Y'all ain't saying nothing. I, I said, I, said I, I got to know something. There has to be something instructive in Jesus' last saying of the last seven sayings. And I looked at it and the Holy Ghost began to talk to me. There's revelation in research. And as I researched, I got revelation. And the first thing I saw that Jesus was trying to teach us a lesson in his last word from his last words. He was trying to teach us that when you're going through difficulties in life and problems and frustrations, you have to remember that your sonship is central. I know I'm talking to some males and females, but I thank God that I'm a son of God. Y'all ain't saying nothing. There's something called sonship theology. R.C. Sproul refers to it and it teaches us that even though you might be male or female, you're still a son. Because if you were a son in the Old Testament, you were able to receive an inheritance. If you were a female, you didn't get an inheritance. There were a few exceptions like in Job chapter 42 where Job gave his daughters, are y'all hearing me, an inheritance. Um, Y'all ain't saying nothing. Come Maya and Cassia and Karen Hoppuck received an inheritance but for the most part it was the sons that received an inheritance. Jesus said father y'all, y'all missed it you don't understand I, you don't understand I got two kids can I get a witness in here and one thing I understand about my children is that I, I'll get up and go to work so they can have some food on their table. I, I work on their behalf when I don't feel like getting up out the bed I think about Harrison and Harmony and the father in me says get your behind up and go to work not for you but for them can I tell y'all we've got a father who doesn't mind working on our behalf I wish I had three of y'all who can say thank God he's my father He'll work on your behalf, but he also knows how much you can carry. Are y'all hearing me? Harrison has the responsibility of not just getting out the car, but when he gets out the car, take some in the house from the car. And often what he says is, Daddy, it's too heavy. And I look back at him and I say, I'm your father. I, I, I wouldn't give it to you. I wouldn't put it in your hand if I didn't know you can carry it. And we have a father who knows just how much we can carry who knows just how much we can bear do I have a witness in here J.I. Packer says in his well known book Knowing God he says if you want to judge how well a person understands Christianity found out from them um, uh, how, how much they make of the thought of being a child of God he says father is the Christian name for God. Jesus liked to talk about his father. Matter of fact, the first time we heard him talk, he was talking about the father. You remember when he was brought to the temple at age 12? Y'all ain't saying nothing. And and his mama and daddy thought he was in the crowd. He was 12, so it wasn't, wasn't odd for him to be walking with his cousins and hanging with his boys on the pilgrimage to the Passover and on the return home. But a day after they got on the journey back home, they looked for Jesus and they couldn't find him. So they went back to, y'all ain't saying nothing, to Jerusalem. And they found him in the temple, sitting down with the doctors, the scribes, the teachers of the law. And the, and the trip was he wasn't just listening he was answering and when they found him they said Jesus why you made us worry like this and the first word he spoke the first recorded message of Jesus Christ he says he says how is it that you looked for me do you not know that I must be about my father's business And the last words he said, he said, Father, 
Riley Murray told y'all there was three prayers from the cross. The first um, one was to his father. He said, Father, forgive them for you know not what they do, for they know not what they do. The second one, are y'all hearing me, is my God, my God, why has thou forsaken me? And the last one, he moves back to father. He says, listen, I may have had to go through something and for a little while the father had to reject me and turn his back on me, but I'm going to go back to the personal partier. Are y'all hearing me? I'm going back because I need you to understand that if I ain't got nobody else, I got a father. When I'm going through hell, I've got a father. My sonship matters. I might cry in the midnight hour, but I can say, Father, I stretch my hand to thee. No other help I know. If thou withdraw thyself from me, or whither shall I go? I got a mama on earth. I got a daddy on earth. I got some good members and some friends. Are y'all hearing me? But I found out people will be there for you a little while. People are with you when you're right, but can they stand with you and pray for you and chastise you when you're wrong, but restore you like Galatians 6 and 1 says, because they know that there is a father who sits high, looks low, got all power in the palm of his own mighty hand. Anybody know we got a father? You ought to say, thank you, I got a father. If I had time, I'll tell you, Father speaks of the authority of God. Jesus said, my meat is the will to do to him the work, the one that sent me. I'll tell you about the affection of God. The Father speaks not only of the authority and the affection. Are y'all hearing me? Max Lucado said, if God got a refrigerator, it's your picture on it. If he got a wallet, it's your photo in it. If he's got a car, the bumper sticker in the back of it is celebrating you. I'll tell you about the accompanying of God, because the Father says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you, but I ain't got time to deal with that but I want to suggest to you today that Jesus is still teaching still teaching dying but teaching and he says listen when you catch in hell your sonship is central but when you're going through your own cross moments when you bearing your own cross cause you do let me back this come out for a minute must Jesus bear the cross alone and all the world go free Touch your neighbor and tell him, no, there's a cross for everyone. And there's a cross for me. This consecrated cross I bear till death shall set me free. Then go home, a crown to wear. For there's a crown for me. I've been in some cross situations. And one thing I've come to understand is what Jesus says. He says, listen, your sonship is central, but your sovereign is capable. Father! into your capable hands. For the last 24 hours, Jesus has been in the hands of man. And with their hands, they beat him. With their hands, they slapped him. With their hands, they abused him. With their hands, say their hands. They crowned him with thorns. With their hands, their hands. They ripped him. They ripped his beard out with their hands. Help me, Holy Ghost. They beat him till he was black and blue with their hands. They whipped him. Are y'all hearing me? Until his flesh came ripping from his back with their hands. Hands, Kyrie in Greek, it literally means um, um, God's power to determine and control destinies, his power to create, uphold, preserve his power. Are y'all hearing me? He says, God, I'm going to put my spirit into your hands. They dealt with my body. <laughs> I'm sorry, I have country fits sometimes, but, but they could not touch my spirit. And he says, Father, into thy hands, thy hands. Thy, this is an anthropomorphic description of God. It is to ascribe to God who is not human, human terms. And it does not limit God's authority and ability. It actually, are y'all hearing me? Describes that God is one who has all power. We talk about his eyes. Are y'all hearing me? You do know he got eyes. He see everything. Y'all ain't saying nothing. He got eyes. He got eyes. His eye is on the sparrow. God can see more with his one eye than you can with all seven of yours. Can I get a witness? He's got eyes. He's got ears. He's got ears. He said, if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear them, hear them, hear them. But, but the good news is like Thomas Dorsey said, he's got hands. 
And I don't know how you feel, but I thank God that when I can't control it, I can put it in the hands of the Lord. The same hands who rolled dust around and yada formed man. Are y'all hearing me? You better love yourself. You're fearfully and wonderfully made. The same hands who put the sun, the moon, and the stars in the sky. The same hand that let the fish swim in the ocean. The same hands that brought down the walls of Jericho. Closed the lion's mouth in the den with Daniel. Fanned the Hebrew boys in the fiery furnace. The same hands. He says, when, I, when I'm going through my own cross situation, when I'm having my own troubles, I need to understand. I need to know, and I need y'all to know. I need to teach y'all. I need y'all to understand that your sonship is central. I need you to understand that you're sovereign. You're God who has all power and authority, who's in complete control. Your sovereign God is capable. But finally, I need you to understand something. I need you to know that if you're going through a Friday moment, your Sunday is coming. <laughs> yes, sir. It's Friday. It's, it's Friday. It's, it's Friday. It's Friday. I said it's Friday. It's Friday. Mary, Jesus' mama is crying at the cross. But it's just Friday. Sunday's coming. It's Friday. I said it's Friday. The apostles were down and out. They were worried and frustrated. Their leader has been killed by evil men. But it's, it, it's just Friday. Sunday's coming. It's Friday. It's, it's Friday. I said it's Friday. Mary Magdalene was out of her mind with grief. Her Lord had just been killed. Nobody else would deal with her because she was a prostitute. Y'all ain't saying nothing. But Jesus didn't come just for folk who ain't never done nothing. I know some of y'all ain't never done nothing. But it's three more y'all in the room who glad that he sat down with sinners. Y'all ain't saying that. I don't know how you feel, but I praise God. It's Friday, it's Friday. The devil thought he had won, but, but, but Sunday was coming. I don't know who I'm talking to, but I need you to understand something. That Jesus uses a financial term. He uses the term commend. Paratathema in Greek, it's a financial term. It's the second financial term he's used. He uses finish. Are y'all hearing me? Meaning that the payment had been paid. Say amen, somebody. But then he says, I'm going to tell you something. I'm putting my hands, I'm putting my spirit, I'm commending, commending, commending my spirit into the hands of God. Commend, commend, paratathema in Greek means to deposit. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Jesus says, listen, when you're going through your own troubles, you better remember your sonship counts. Your sovereign God is capable, but your Sunday is coming. Some of y'all are in the Friday of your life right now. Some of you are going through hell right now. Your life is horrible, but if you can hold on to Sunday, your life's going to be hallelujah and hopeful. Some of y'all are in the Friday of your life right now. Life is painful, but if you can just wait till Sunday... If you can just wait till Sunday, you're going to be joyful. Friday is victimizing, but Sunday is victorious. Friday has sickness, but Sunday has healing. Friday, you're without, but on Sunday comes wealth. Friday is hard, but Sunday makes life easier. Who am I talking to? You're going through your own Friday right now. You're going through your own Friday right now. Can, can I get y'all to just help me look at somebody and minister to them and touch one person? I ain't telling you to find three. Just grab hold of one somebody and tell them, I know you're in Friday. See, Sean, but yes, yeah, Sunday is coming. Do I have a witness in here who can testify that the gospel of Jesus Christ teaches us that trouble don't last always I said the gospel teaches us that if you can just hold on through your trouble that Sunday morning is coming 
don't know if your Friday is going to be in two days. It might be if your Sunday is going to come in two days. It might be two weeks. It might be two years. It might be y'all ain't saying nothing, but you just got to learn how to wait on the Lord. You got to learn how to wait on him. Psalms 30 verse 5 says weeping may endure for a night but joy cometh in the morning the Bible says y'all remember Isaiah he said has thou not known has thou not heard can I get a witness in here that the Lord the God the everlasting God fainteth not neither is weary there is no searching of his understanding he giveth power to the faint and to them that have no might he increaseth strength even to you shall shall faint and yes be weary and the young men shall utterly fall but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength they shall mount up with wings and eagles. They shall run and not faint. Do I have a witness in here that don't mind telling God thank you that it might be Friday but my Sunday is coming. Do I have a witness in here? There was a little boy one time. He was the son of a black Baptist preacher and he said, Daddy, do you have to kill Jesus every Sunday? He said, I got to kill him. I got to put him on the cross. I got to holler, he died, he died, but then I can't leave him up there. I got to tell people that early, I asked Pastor Charles Williams, he's one of my sons in the ministry, I said, I'm going last, can I get him up? He says, yes, you got to get him up, but you can only say early one time, and so since I can't say it, you ought to say it, you ought to say early. Early Sunday morning, he got up. Anybody know he got up? We ought to celebrate Calvary. We ought to say, Thank you, God, that trouble don't last always. Anybody know Jesus? I got three country questions. I drove all the way for four miles just to ask you three questions. Do you know him? I say, do you know him? Have you tried him? Ain't he all right? Come on, tell somebody I know him. Tell him he woke me up this morning. Tell him he put food on my table. He put clothes on my back. He put joy down on the inside. Anybody know him? Say yeah. Say yeah. Say yeah. No, he's all right. Come on, grab somebody, shake on them, and rock them, and look them in the eye, and say one thing I know. No, he's all right. Come on, lift Jesus. Come on, praise Jesus. Come on, come on, thank God for Calvary. Come on, thank God for redemption. Thank God for the blood. Thank God for salvation. Thank God. Thank God. Say yeah. 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 Praise our God. I feel like going on. The altar is open. You ought to be there. Yes, I feel. You ought to be at the altar now.